Yep. In the in the early phase, particularly in the phase one of the trial, um, they'll sometimes include a dose escalation uh, aspect of that, which means that the first patients may receive a lower dose, and then subsequent groups of patients may receive other doses, higher doses. The reason for that generally is for safety. Um, in case there is a dose-related side effect, um, we don't want to go to the maximum possible dose first and then possibly incur the most severe side effect. So let's just say, you know, I'll make a, a, an example that probably wouldn't apply here, but let's say that a gene therapy causes a fever. Well, you might start with a low dose and see if the patient gets a fever of 101 instead of going directly to the highest dose and then the patient might get a fever of 105. You know, it, 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 such things actually do happen with, with some other types of therapies. That, they don't usually, that doesn't usually happen with AAV gene therapies, but it actually it does happen with certain cell therapies. And so, 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 you know, and so, you know, if you don't really know exactly from the preclinical, from the animal testing, exactly what dose a human being is gonna have what level of side effect, it, it, it probably pretty important to do some patients at a lower dose. Now, it used to be that we would do doses in, in very early days of gene therapy. We, we would do, they wanted to see us have doses that had no effect and then go up into doses that had an effect and then to doses maybe that were uh, potentially, uh, potentially pr producing side effects that were kind of a maximum tolerated dose. There's, there is now, no desire to have no effect doses. In other words, you're supposed to start the low end of your dose escalation in a range that still is reasonable that it, there could be some benefit. Um, but so the, the dose ranges in dose escalation trials have, have, have narrowed uh, quite a bit. But you know, if you're a family, and I, I've had this from the very first clinical trials I, I did, and I said, okay, well, you're, you're, you're gonna be in the first one, so you're gonna be at the lowest dose. Uh, and sometimes people say, well, maybe I shouldn't be in the first one. I, maybe I should wait and be in the th third dose because then I'll get the, you know, the full bang for the buck. Uh, and, you know, uh, again, if you're, a f if you're a parent of a patient, you're really, you're, you know, your world is your child. <laughs> it's, uh, you, 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 it's not, a, it's not, a, it's not a, uh, unexpected that you might, might f think that way. But uh, again, we need people to volunteer to go first so that we can move down the path. And we don't have, we don't have highly precise ways to predict doses in gene therapy. And so for that reason, sometimes when we think we need the high dose, we don't really need the high dose. And sometimes what we think is the low dose will work, and sometimes the high dose has a side effect that counteracts how much it works or, or that is, uh, creates a real problem. So um, we try not to ask parents to participate at any level where there's not a reasonable risk benefit. And we try to, in pediatrics, establish this um, alliance with the parents to understand uh, the goals of the, of the treatment and, uh, and, and what, you know, what, they, what their wishes are. In doing clinical research, it's an extension of that approach uh, but with a lot more complexity, right? So we have to work together with a lot of transparency to understand what we know, what we don't know at each stage, and what, uh, what the risks and the benefits are. And we're working together to try to maximize the benefit both to the child who's here with us, but also to other children with the condition. And that last part is hard, but we have to do those in, in, in parallel. And so sometimes, uh, despite our best effort, what we're doing with the child in front of us is maybe maybe too low a dose. It may not. It may be that this particular therapy isn't the right isn't the right one. But before we do the trial, we think it might be, uh, and that still adds some benefit to the broader community of those patients. I, I have. I don't think ever out, out of you know well more than thirty years of doing this encountered 
a family uh, of a patient with a rare disease that said, you know, I don't care at all about other people with that condition. I mean, they, you know, in the moment they may sort of say something like that, but it, you know, even in the medium or long term, never, never, families don't don't tend to think like that. Um, as long as we know we're doing the, the best we can for their child together, uh, then the fact that the greater benefit might come to others later on is usually something families are, 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 are very comfortable with.